Hey Minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I can finally say that again. I'm Jim Price, and today I want to talk about my top 10 Smash Up recruits. But first, a quick note about this week's programming. This is obviously a bonus video because it's Tuesday, and there are a few other bonus videos this week because I'm trying to clear out the backlog before moving on to the next series, which is pre-recorded. My wife is expecting to deliver our daughter this week, and I'll be taking some time off to care for them, while simultaneously finalizing Arudia for Kickstarter, and somehow managing to not die in the process. So I hope you enjoy the extra content this week. There will be a new Smash Up series next week, and I think you'll enjoy it. But first, there are a few things I wanted to get to this week. So what's a recruit? If you've been following the Arudia videos, first, thank you, and you would recall that they are the lowest rank unit in the army. In Smash Up, this corresponds to a 4 racks group of Power 2. I wanted to talk about recruits to close out the Marvel series because it ties back to the idea of deck sifting and its increased presence in Marvel. Deck sifting operates under the premise of bad cards, and if any card is going to be sifted, it's most likely a recruit. But a well-designed faction would have good, diverse recruits, so I'll be talking about 10 recruits that I really like. This is a hard list, showing that there are many good candidates and disputing the need for deck sifting but I limited myself to 10, and I ordered them based not on their strength, but also their recruitiness. Recruitiness is the technical term for how much an ability feels like it belongs to a recruit for a given faction, given its power and presence in your deck. There are some recruits who are simply too strong, or feel like they play a more prominent role in the deck, and some of these I really like. But this is a chance to talk about cards that have a diverse job and do it well, and ones I find myself really discarding without being a never discard. Number 10 is the Mummy. Mummy itself is a good card that looks worse because of a card like First Mate, but it is a time-throttled perennial play and helps you maintain presence. They can offer themselves as power for Priest of Anubis, which is good because it's hard to uncover all your mummies. And they may be even better if the ancient Egyptians moved around some of their uncovering. But when you look at their role in the faction, it feels right. Play them early and often, and maintain long-term investment in them. Number 9 and 8 are a tie, because they essentially do the same thing movement. Captain Ahab and Dudley are very comparable, so much so that they were featured in a Call of the Week episode. But they provide a low power investment that can move to your true destination, and these are the types of plays good for recruits. Spread out, avoid attention or pressure, and use them appropriately. With Rotary Slug Thrower, Ahabs can be really impactful, while Dudley can provide a nice power boost. They have an easy to understand job, and they do it very well. Number 7 is the Argonaut. It's weird to think of a recruit being objectively better than an action, but Argonaut feels like its own personal favor of Hera. Same amount of power, and he still triggers an action, and you can play both with an action, but you also get minion benefits. Argonauts are so flexible and easy to play that they are rarely discarded because why wouldn't you play them? They are a good advanced action option, but can also function as finishers with extra actions. I mentioned years ago how they increased in relevance with Titans because they can get minion plays from your action slot, and many Titans consume your minion slot. I still enjoy them, and they maintain good value even if the other Greeks themselves are not internally balanced. Number 6 is the Mako. Like the Argonaut, they are easy to play, and can be played in batches and serve a vital role in the faction. Replacement power. Destruction can backfire as you stall for the sake of stalling, but Makos change that paradigm. They tend to be hoarded in your hand for some nice swings in either Phase 2 or Phase 3. Their special ability is so strong that it requires desperation to ever play them normally, and that's good for a recruit, maximizing the utility of its quantity. Number 5 is the Amboro Hornet, for many of the same reasons as Mako. In fact, they serve the same role, fleshing out the core theme of their respective factions. But the Hornets get the higher spot, not just because they like Anansi more, but because they drive a lot more nuance than the Makos do. Destruction is something that is easy to trigger, and you can trigger it entirely by yourself, given that you make the plays necessary. But the Hornets add the intrigue of do I have any, and provide an intangible benefit of forcing someone to hold onto your cards for fear of triggering the Hornets, which can allow for collecting stories to replay your cards. Hornets also have the benefit of being played anywhere, whereas Makos are local, and that also breaks the tiebreaker. Number 4 is the Yellow Demon. There are few recruits that I like having more on turn 1. It's somewhat fascinating, 4 minions who can only grab 3 cards, but given the deck and discard nature, they are vital. They will only be discarded if other Yellow Demons have already done their job, which really speaks to the nature of quantity in ensuring that you see them in your deck. Their early game status gives them a lot of value, 
which mostly carries them on this list, but they are also essential for many of your key plays. Without the Yellow Demons, the Luchadors don't really work, but it's more of a silent leadership than an obvious one, which is a good sign for a recruit. Number 3 is the Sneaky Squire. I put the Sneaky Squire at 3 because of this thought experiment. If you knew the core theme of Ignobles and were designing them from scratch, could you really envision any other ability in the recruit slot? I couldn't, and that shows just how well they fit in their own faction. They have a lot of utility, despite the fact that they don't seemingly help you because they are given away. But most ignoble synergies rely on them, and they become a key cog in the Foot of the King engine. I often sell the ignoble minion short, but not today, because despite other issues with their minions, Sneaky Squire is not the problem. Number 2 is the War Raptor, the ideal corset recruit. It has an ability that screams quantity, and it's given to the perfect quantity slot. It's inherently defensive with above average power, puts many other minions to shame, and can offer some great power activation. It carries its slot well, despite some really bad minions in its faction, to the point where you almost feel bad for the War Raptors. This is the type of card you could really build around, and though I like dinosaurs, I do find myself wishing I could extract them into someone else. I also think that the War Raptors establish a template for a War Raptor type. You have the Griminions, the pawns from my chess faction, there are many things that you can do with the idea of self-boosting recruits, and it all started with a corset faction. But they aren't number one. My number one is a card that can be really strong. It can be situationally useless. But it nevertheless captures your attention, and that is the copycat. When I win games because of the copycat, it feels amazing, because it feels like you have access to so many other abilities. This recruit makes all the other rival minions in a particular game relevant, and you live in fear that the copycat may provide more value at 4x than the minion being copied. And yet, it's hard to argue that they are better than any of the other shapeshifters. They have the lowest floor, clearly, but still provide great value and intrigue, and they will always remain relevant. So those are my top 10 recruits. Even for the recruits I feel are too strong, it's good that they are in the conversation, because it shows that abilities often matter more than power. I think depth sifting sometimes forgets that, and factions shine best when they use all their cards. This is what many have commented as a strength about Marvel, less spectacular cards, but smaller gaps between them. And if you get the recruits right, you have a solid foundation for your faction. What are your favorite recruits? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, let's shut it down.